Congratulations on the birth of your infant. Our nursing team wants to be sure you have the information you need to care for yourself and your infant as you discharge home. Mission Hospital has the Circle app for your educational needs. The app can travel with you and the information you need will always be at your fingertips through your mobile phone. The Circle app is in both English and Spanish. If you have not already done so, please be sure to download this free app and register. You should have already received the Full Circle My Maternity Journey Teaching Sheet back in labor and delivery or upon arrival to the postpartum floor. This teaching sheet helps you locate key information related to care of yourself, your infant, breastfeeding tips, and information regarding postpartum emotional changes. Please review the assigned topics for discharge and give the signed copy back to your nurse. Keep one copy for yourself as an easy reference guide to use at home. Schedule your postpartum appointment with your provider, usually at four to six weeks after delivery for vaginal births and two weeks for incision check for cesarean sections, with a follow-up appointment again in six weeks. Do you have help at home? Someone to help care for you or your other children, or help with chores around the house while you take care of yourself and your infant? It's important to leave the cooking, cleaning, laundry, and driving to your support person while you heal that first week or two. It is also important to rest during the day when your infant is sleeping, as you will be up during the night for feedings. General information regarding care of yourself at home. Nothing in your vagina for six weeks or until your provider gives you the clearance. No tampons, douching, or sexual intercourse. Please talk to your provider about your family planning needs. The best exercises to do at this time is your Kegel exercises and walking. So on a nice sunny day, put your infant in a stroller and walk outside. This will help you feel better, both physically and mentally. No heavy lifting or driving for two weeks until you are off pain medications. Your breast milk should come in between three to four days postpartum. Be sure to wear a supportive nursing bra, no underwires, as your breasts fill. Do not use soap on your nipples when you shower. Use your own express breast milk to help with sore nipples. Alternating positioning of infant when breastfeeding should also help with sore nipples. For example, place infant in a cross cradle hold for one feeding, followed by the football hold at the next feeding. This allows your infant to suck on different portions of your breast during feedings. Some women get engorged when breast milk comes in. To help soften the breast and get infant to latch on deeply for feedings, place ice packs on your breast 15 to 20 minutes prior to the feeding. You may also use a breast pump and pump your breasts until your breasts are soft enough to latch infant effectively. For moms who are bottle feeding only, make sure you wear a tight fitting sports bra 24 hours a day to help suppress any breast milk production. Keep using Tux, Dermaplast spray, and water bottle on your perineum for comfort. Any sutures that were used in a repair from your vaginal delivery will dissolve on their own. Sitz baths may also be useful for a sore perineum and hemorrhoids. Please make sure your bathtub is clean and soak in warm, not too hot, water without any soap products for 15 to 20 minutes, two to three times a day. Most providers will order over-the-counter medications for pain relief for vaginal delivery, such as ibuprofen, Motrin, and acetaminophen, Tylenol. Please take as directed and take all medications with food or crackers to help decrease any nausea or vomiting, common side effects for most medications. Opioids, narcotics, are often prescribed for cesarean sections and for vaginal deliveries with extensive repairs. Norco, Vicodin, and Percocet are the two most common narcotics prescribed. Two of the major side effects of opioids include drowsiness and constipation. Make sure you are taking stool softeners while on opioids. An example of this would be taking over-the-counter colase, 100 milligrams by mouth, twice a day. Your need for use of opioids should decrease as the days go by. It is important to note that a small amount of opioids are passed on to your infant in your breast milk. Please make sure your nurse reviews with you how to wean off opioids and how to properly dispose of any unused opioids that you have at home. 
Concerns to report to your provider include a temperature of 100.4 or greater, any fever or chills. Increased bleeding, by that I mean soaking through one whole peripat in an hour's time. Your bleeding should be decreasing as the days go by. Your bleeding starts as a bright red color, moves to a brownish pink color, and then eventually changes to a yellowish white color. If your bleeding ever returns to that bright red color, call your provider as this could mean you have retained placental fragments. If you notice you are changing more peri pads at home than here in the hospital, that's your body's way of saying stop, slow down, you are doing too much. So please listen to your body and rest when needed. Call your provider if you are passing blood clots the size of a golf ball or small egg. Notify your provider if you have a foul odor coming from your vagina. It should smell like a fleshy smell. Change your pads every time you go to the bathroom to help prevent infection. Call your provider if you have severe rectal pain or any signs and symptoms of a urinary tract infection. That's when you have the urge to void, but you only void a little bit, usually accompanied by a burning sensation and fever. Notify your provider if you have a severe headache or vision changes that do not go away even after taking pain medications. Call your provider for any signs and symptoms of a breast infection, also known as mastitis. Signs of mastitis include fever, body aches, and breasts that are usually red and hot to the touch. Frequently breastfeeding your infant and manually massaging your breasts by feeding your infant can help to prevent this. For cesarean deliveries, call your provider for any signs and symptoms of infection at the incision site. If there is redness, pus, or drainage at the site, or if the incision is opening up and not healing properly. Call if you have redness, warmth, or pain in your calf area. It may mean that you have a blood clot. Moms are at an increased risk for blood clots at four to six weeks post-delivery related to their body's increased release of a hormone called estrogen. Baby blues are normal. When you are crying and you don't know why, or maybe you are short-tempered with your significant other and you can't explain it. This is normal as your hormones are adjusting. Be patient with yourself and be patient with each other. Notify your provider if you experience increased anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder tendencies, or if you can't get out of bed to take care of yourself or your infant. We encourage your support person to call your provider if they notice any unusual behaviors. Please refer to the Circle app under Perinatal Mood Disorders for more information on this important topic. Call 911 for shortness of breath, chest pain, seizures, or if you have thoughts of hurting yourself or your baby. Mission Hospital offers discharge resources that include lactation support through our lactation phone line at 949-365-2425. Leave a voice message and one of our lactation consultants will call you back within 24 hours. Private appointments are also available if you are having problems with breastfeeding. Our postpartum emotional wellness support group meets virtually through Microsoft Teams every Tuesday at 10 a.m. This class is free and you can call 949-499-7504 or email the address listed on this slide to get instructions on how to sign up and register on Microsoft Teams. A clinical therapist specialist in prenatal and postpartum depression is also available for personal appointments by physician referral or by calling 949-324-2133. Mission Hospital's Maternal Health and Wellness Intensive Outpatient Program offers an evidence-based group therapy for pregnant and postpartum moms. If interested, please call 949-499-7504 to get started and schedule an assessment. General information on your infant. Hiccups, sneezing, and small lip quivers are all normal infant behaviors. Some infants have milia, clogged pores on their nose and chin. This is normal and will clear on its own. Some infants develop a newborn rash which looks like small mosquito bites or flea bites. This rash usually starts on the trunk and can move to the arms, legs, and face. This rash will clear on its own. Do not pick at this rash as this could leave a scar on your infant. Sponge bathe your infant with warm water only every couple of days 
not every day, until the umbilical cord falls off and the circumcision heals, usually within 10 to 14 days. To help speed healing, remember to keep the umbilical stump dry and avoid getting this area wet. Make sure all who meet your infant wash their hands and kiss your newborn on the top of the head instead of on the face. This will help prevent your infant from getting sick. Encourage toddlers and other siblings to kiss your infant on their toes or feet. No one should visit your infant if they have any signs and symptoms of illness, even if they say it is just allergies. Do you know how to use your bulb syringe if your infant gets congested? We use the bulb syringe more in the mouth here in the hospital, but when you get home, its primary use is for the nose. If you notice any nasal secretions, you can use it then. Use sparingly. Overuse can cause your infant to become more congested. If your infant has a red or sore looking bottom, you can use Desitin or A&D ointment for relief. No baby powder should be used on your infant. Baby powder is airborne and can get into your infant's lungs and make your infant very sick. Your infant just needs one extra layer of clothing than what you are wearing. A onesie underneath an outfit should suffice. Overdressing your infant is dangerous and can lead to an increase in sudden infant death syndrome. Please review general care of infant at home on your Circle app under Daily Routine and Baby's Health. Some of the topics covered include temperature taking, changing diapers, and bathing your infant. Do you know how to use your infant's car seat? Your infant should ride in a rear-facing car seat as long as possible until they reach the highest weight or height allowed by their seat. Always put your infant in a rear-facing child safety seat in the back of your car. Never put a blanket between your infant and the harness straps. Please follow the manufacturer instructions specific to the car seat you have purchased. When does your pediatrician want to see your infant? Call your pediatrician before your first visit or in between visits if your infant shows any of the concerns addressed in the following slides. If your infant has a temperature of 100.4 or greater, or if your infant's temperature is less than 97.6, it is important to know that infants who are sick can have a high temperature or a low temperature. What kind of thermometer do you have at home? Ear thermometers are not accurate on infants and should not be used. We recommend a digital thermometer that can take your infant's temperature, both axillary, underneath the armpit, or rectally. Refer to your Circle app for more detailed information on temperature taking. Call your pediatrician if your infant has two or three feedings in a row where you cannot get your infant to wake up and feed. You've tried changing the diaper, taking infant's clothes off, and doing skin to skin, and your infant remains sleepy and not interested in feeding. Call if your infant has poor muscle tone, if he or she looks like a rag doll. Remember, a well infant is active and has good muscle tone. Call if there are any signs and symptoms of jaundice, if the whites of your infant's eyes are yellow, and or if you press on your infant's stomach or legs and it is a yellow-orange color, it is important that your infant be seen by your pediatrician. Other infant concerns to report to your pediatrician include projectile vomiting or vomit that is green or bloody, excessive crying that is not resolved with calming measures, drainage or increased redness or swelling around the umbilical cord, any blood in the infant's stool. Girls can have a mucus discharge coming from their vagina and may even have a small amount of bleeding coming from their vagina, which is normal. This is due to the increased hormones they receive from mom during pregnancy. Infant stool should be soft and loose. The initial stool is called meconium and is black and sticky. Then the stool moves to a transitional stool a brownish green color and then to a seedy yellow color which we see when moms are breastfeeding. Stools for bottle fed babies can be a seedy green or yellow color. Bowel patterns in infants are not regular. One day your infant may go three or four times and then the next day have no stool. If your infant's belly is soft and if the poops you are changing are soft, it's okay. Call your pediatrician if your infant has not stooled in two days. Your infant should be wetting at least six to eight wet diapers by the time he or she is one week of age. How do you remember this? Seven wet diapers in seven days. 
If the urine has a strong odor or is an orange brick dust color, it could mean that your infant is a little dehydrated. Increase feedings and it should resolve. Infants go through various growth spurts, usually around two weeks and four weeks of age. They will want to feed constantly and this is normal. It does not mean you do not have enough breast milk, especially if you are changing many wet and poopy diapers. Infants also like to do what we call cluster feedings, which many times happens around your dinner hour. This too is very normal. You are just gonna feed your infant based on feeding cues and remember that everything is okay. Place infants on their backs for sleep, never on their sides or stomach, to help prevent the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome. Fans are recommended in infant's room for the first year of life to keep on while infant is sleeping. The circulating air helps blow off extra carbon dioxide and helps decrease the incidence of SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. A pacifier introduced after one month of age or when breastfeeding is fully established will have the same benefit for your baby. No co-bedding with your infant. We encourage you to do skin to skin with your infant at home. But if you are feeling like you are falling asleep doing skin to skin or breastfeeding your infant, please have your significant other place infant in their own bassinet or crib for safety purposes. Call 911 if your baby is blue, choking, or having difficulty breathing. Again, our team and hospital congratulate you. We are honored that you chose Mission Hospital and that we have been a part of this incredibly special time in your life. Please refer to your Circle app for additional information on the topics reviewed in this slideshow presentation. Prior to going home, please make sure you have all the discharge information you need. Our nursing team wishes you all the best with your new little one.